All right, folks, I wanna jump into a quick lecture on how to get started for your self-portrait project for drawing one. So charcoal would be my recommendation for materials. And just like almost any drawing that we do in class, I would suggest that you start with a gesture. I'd also like for you to position your head at a three quarter view instead of going straight on because it's gonna give you a little more opportunity to show volume in the face. Last but not least, I'd also like for you to try to do this from a mirror instead of a photograph in order to help you achieve that sense of volume. So let's get started. Right. So if you heard that noise, I think that was my children dumping out every single Lego that they own downstairs. Yay. Um, a couple of things to note about this gesture, the big axis line cutting through the center of um, our relatively symmetrical features can be a very, very nice diagrammatic line to help with placement where things are going to go. Just keeping yourself on track in terms of how everything stacks up and lines up. The other thing to pay attention to that you probably noticed were some of those diagrammatic lines that I ran through the features of the face, emphasizing that idea that all of these features are on the curves of the head and following the curves of the head, um, including you know the base of the nose, the line of the lips, the curve of the eyes. So let's get down to business with a few more diagrammatic lines to show proportion, right? One of the big aspects of proportion for portrait is thinking about the placement of the eyes. The base of the eye socket is about the halfway mark of the head. And a lot of times folks end up placing the eyes too high. So you want to make sure you're giving yourself enough volume for forehead. If you've got a ton of hair, if you're wearing a hat, it's going to be even over and above just where the top of the skull would be.
All right, a couple of quick proportional areas to note right now would be the way that the inner corner of the eye lines up with the edge of the nostril on either side of the nose, and the way the edge of the iris actually lines up with the edge of the lip as well. So that can be another um, just level, plumb and level line uh, kind of area to look for proportional alignments. Also, the eyes line up, the central line through the eyes are lining up with the top of the ear and the base of the nose is lining up with the base of the ear. Noses are almost invariably larger than folks want to draw them. It's not an anime situation. And on the flip side of that, eyes are almost invariably smaller. We've been very conditioned by cartoons and cute babies to make drawings with giant eyes. Um, ears are typically larger and usually a little bit lower than folks tend to set them. Looking for the line of the neck and the edge of the shoulders can give your drawing a lot of grounding and can help place it and anchor it in space. And again, don't forget the volume of the hair, right? That's an important component if you have any. If you don't, then that's awesome. Get out of that. I'm not gonna push this video much longer. It's already pretty long. Um, so if you wanna see a self-portrait that I did all the way through completion, I did do a time-lapse video. So you can check out some of the strategies that I used for shading for that one. And I'm really loving the light that's coming in from my window now for this because it's pretty dramatic and interesting. So make sure you set up a scenario for yourself at home where you've got some good, um, intense highlights and shadows to help you find that volume through shading. There goes more Legos. All right, guys, talk to you soon.